to the business. Hey, God is my witness, they watching my moves like shows they binging. Hey, best keep distance, all of my haters send best of wishes. I get to the bag with the quickness, no, I don't need no assistance. Hey, yeah, no playing it safe. I said, let's get it, you say not today. What can I say? If you ain't gonna go for it, get out the way. Yeah, got no time to waste. Can't be with me if you're not at my pace. You're not at my level, you're not at my race. One foot on the gas, I'm yeah, pushing the yeah. brakes. Dancing with the devil, there's no recital. I'm killing competition, ain't no revival. I shoot it to kill it, I'm aiming for vitals. I'm showing no mercy when facing my rivals. Who's facing the crash, they're getting exposed. I know they be lurking, I'm watching them close. Acting like friends, but really they foes. So they be scheming and said adios. The reign of Brandon Traino has come to a close. The 13th running of the iRacing Indianapolis 500 is in the history books and Christian Steele has etched his name as a winner here at the Brickyard. With that as our backdrop, we welcome you to round 11 of the 2022 Season 2 iRacing IndyCar Open Championship as with two rounds of the season left to go, we have our own little take on our version of the Indianapolis 500 mile race. Hello everyone and welcome back to RaceBot TV where along my, with myself Arjuna Kanki Party, delighted to be joined by Andrew Kinsella and Andrew we changed things up from what we saw this past weekend. The setups will be slightly different with cooler track conditions. The qualifying setups will be now just tailored to go fast for one lap. What does that mean for our drivers as they get set for tonight? Yeah it's a completely different mentality tonight Arjuna. We really have um Departed from the 500 miles that we saw over the weekend here with, with that uh, excellent race um, on Saturday. But today it's all about more of a sprint mentality than, uh, than what we saw then. It was an endurance race on Saturday, today it's a sprint. And it really changes what the driver's thinking about. It changes how you approach strategy and it changes 
uh, how important qualifying is. And as you say, only one lap to worry about. You don't need to make the tires last. So people are going to be going for broke here and, and just seeing whatever the car can give them. That's what they're going to take here. 80 laps here today in seven days time. We round out the championship by following the circus of the NTT IndyCar Series to the streets of the Motor City. The Belle Isle Street Circuit will host our championship finale for today's, oh, for this season's 2022 Season 2 IndyCar Open Championship. Let's look at the points again. 12 rounds of the championship, but only your best eight points will count to the championship totals. It's Brandon Trainer that sits at the top. And very comfortably clear of the likes of Adam Crane, Alexis Newsom, and even Adam Blocker, who's only competed in seven rounds of the championship and has crashed out of a couple of them as well. But you look at these points, you look at the gap at the front, but then there's some fun battles further back in the field as well. The likes of Crane Newsom uh, for second on the track. Don't think we're going to see Adam Crane today. He's been uh, working at the Canadian Time Motorsports Park with some real world motorsports, but it's always difficult at this point of the season. Andrew to, to figure out where the drivers sit with those drop weeks and it means that you still got plenty of points on the cars and with a 22 car field today with some strong names but some notable exceptions be very curious to see what the points totals will look like. Yeah absolutely it's the time it's a time of season that you really need to buckle down if you're in that sort of uh, ba battle for positions like you are if you're Alexis Newsom or even a David Porcelli will lie and um, there's still a lot to play for here, even though it seems like some of the gaps may be bigger than you can overcome. It's very easy, particularly on a day like this, where we have a lot of very strong drivers in this field. Very high strength of field means lots of points on offer. There's a lot to be had here, and it's very likely that we could see some positions change hands here today. I know you said that no one ever gets sick of the Indianapolis Motor Speedway if you're a true IndyCar fan, but I think for the drivers that are skipping today, they'll take umbrage with that statement. They'll also, I think, for those racing here today, be very glad to see the back of the Indianapolis Motor Speedway, at least until maybe the month of November when we look forward to the Open Wheels 500-mile race returning to us here on RaceBot TV. But with that said, we're it's the time to go racing. The time for talk is done. It's time to see how they'll line up for round 11 of this championship. And is it a shock to see Brandon Treno at the front of the qualifying sheets? It's been the story of the season. It's the story for the king of the breaks. Yes, but Orman five thousandths off as he'll line up on the outside of row two. Marco Brazil and Andreas Ike share row number two. Alexis Newsom was looking odds on favorite for the victory in the Indianapolis 500 just a couple of days ago before cautions messed up the strategy call. She'll line up though inside of Rodrigo Franzoni from row number three. Henry Bennett returns to a Monday night where he'll share row four with the muscle man, Chris Wilhite and Matt Holliber through the top 10. Fernando Borda and Rashad Craig will line up in 11th and 12th while behind them Andrew Marquez and David Porcelli find one another. Porcelli coming off his first top split iRacing Indy 500 appearance. Gira in uh, in Kinesis, excuse me, and Aaron McQuarrie 15th and 16th, while Gil Ribeiro and Alexander Russell 17th and 18th. Alexander Russell squeaking into the top split of the iRacing Indianapolis 500. Severi Seppa and Vinicius Gotardello in the top 20, while David Henger and Matt Taylor will round up the field. 80 laps on the board, we've got 22 cars, three splits of competition, which is always good to see as the cars get ready to rock and roll for an 80 lap affair here at the brake car. Let's talk to you about the track conditions. It's much cooler, Andrew, than it was this past weekend for the iRacing Indianapolis 500. Yes, and this will be a welcome respite for all of these drivers who endure sweltering conditions for the iRacing Indy 500. This uh, should mean that we'll see a lot more action on track. The tires will fall off less than we saw on Saturday. So this is, is very good news for many of these drivers here. But did I really read that right, Arjuna? The entire top 10 separated by less than a tenth of a second on a two, uh, two and a half mile oval? Well, the margin between the top 50 and the four lap qualifying runs was about, I think it was 1.3 uh, tenths of a second. So I'm not shocked to see that, but Again, you mentioned it, you're trimming out the car maybe a little bit more because the tires, you don't have to mind them as much, Andrew. Usually in a four lap run, lap one's the quickest. Well, you can go even harder on the qualifying setup for this one lap qualifying shootout. 
That, that is very true, but I expected at least a few more mistakes than we saw in qualifying, but that just goes to show you just how much time and effort that these drivers put in over the course of the month of May in the lead up to the 500. All of these drivers are absolutely dialed in on how to drive this track, so that should make this race very, very interesting because on the one hand, because it's a sprint, you might see drivers trying to push the envelope and, and make mistakes, but on the other hand, because they have so much experience, they know exactly just how far that they can push it, so it should make for a very interesting combination here today. Of course, Brandon Treno, well, he's he's out for blood, I think is the best way to put it after being crashed down on, on lap four uh, in his quest to become Mr. Four-Time. Any predictions, Andrew? I mean, I think it's clear the favorites at the front of the field. Favorites at the front, but don't count out uh, some of the drivers further back in the pack, particularly uh, I believe we do have a Henry Bennett here uh, on a Monday night, which is a rarity, but um, he is always very strong at Indy, and he's got a strong setup, so I expect him to do well as well. Four consecutive top ten finishes for Henry Bennett in the feature race of the iRacing Indianapolis 500. That is not a streak to be sniffed at either. Yes, all the plaudits will go for the victories, but being consistent is something to behold as well. 80 laps on the board as we get set for the penultimate round of 2022 Season 2 in the iRacing IndyCar Open Championship. We're underway at the break card. It's a great start from Brandon Treno. A good launch as well from Jesper Orman. Marco Brazil managing to fend off the charge of Andreas Eich. Alexis Newsom down the inside. Henry Bennett trying to make it too wide as they rumble through Turn 2. And Henry's just losing out just a little bit on that inside, but he's trying to fight back as best he can. The problem with that inside is you don't have a lot of help, so there's a lot more draft on that outside, and it's starting to funnel down uh, into this turn one, but it looks like it's Jesper Orman going to the front here over Brandon Trano just for right now. With the cooler conditions, it'll be easier to follow. It'll be easier for the cars further back in line potentially as well to get a move going on. Marco Brazil will get into the draft of Brandon Treno leading at the line was the king of the bricks and there goes Brazil down the inside of former teammate Jesper Orman. The Swede has to get slightly out of the groove to ensure that they don't run into one another. Rodrigo Franzoni finds himself side by side with AJ Musselman. Henry Bennett tried to go aggressive on that point. It's cost him two positions. And not the start that Henry Bennett needed, but it's definitely some fast and furious act action here. And you can definitely see just how much that draft is in effect here because one step out of line and it just propels you towards the back of the, of the field in a very quick manner. Or up front, it's it looks like uh, almost status quo with that Indy 500 where the swap draft between the top two is really, really powerful here, Arjuna. And again, Marco Brazil's going to try and look down low as they rumble their way through turn one, but again, just not able to find the purchase, and we'll have to back out of that one for now. Working lap three of 80. In terms of fuel windows, we should also note as well that if we go green, it's a rather big pit window that you could try and take advantage of. We saw multiple strategies this past weekend. Uh, of course, the favorite strategy was fuel saving, but very much team games playing into that one. You'd think that in this sort of a race that when you're able to follow a little bit closer, maybe you can use those fuel maps to save just a little bit more fuel. Quite a clear two-stop strategy here today, Arjuna. We definitely can't, uh, or we won't see anyone trying to push that 40-lap one-stop window. But that being said, a caution here will change everything when it comes to strategy. So I suspect a lot of these drivers right now, they're just sort of trying to feel each other out, but they're also seeing just how aggressive people are and whether or not to expect that caution coming early on in this race. Because I, I think if you get a caution starting from right around lap 10, Look for everyone to come to pit lane, and then they should be able to make it on one more stop from there, even if it could be a little bit of a stretch for some. So plenty of uh, fighting with worn tires at the end of the race last week, or rather this past weekend. Didn't really work out for those that tried to stay out, so there's your indication. Looks like Marco Brazil might have managed to get in front of Jesper Orman. In fact, uh, Brazil's fighting with Treino as they funnel their way through the short shoot into turn two. Brazil's up into second, and we know Marco Brazil likes clean air at the front of the field. Yeah, this is 100% Marco Aurelio Brazil's MO. He really likes to get to the front of these fields, and one of the things we know about him is he likes to set up his car for clean air. He does a lot of running in clean air, and his car doesn't necessarily work the best in traffic most of the time. But when he gets out front like this, he gets very difficult to pass, and he's very difficult uh, it's very difficult to uh, find a way by him. So I think now that um, he's there, it's a question of just how much he's going to cooperate here with Brandon Trano and how much um, 
uh, he, he's just going to try and lead uh, just from himself at this point. We're riding on board with Alexis Newsom. We showed some fuel saving gains this past Saturday. Unfortunately, like we said, a caution with about 20 laps to go put to bed the hopes of being able to cycle that to the front of the field. At the end of the day, it was a one lap shootout that saw Christian Steele take it three wide with Alexis News uh, Newsom and Jacob Oster to take the victory in the 13th running of the iRacing Indianapolis 500. Chris Wilhite gets passed by Henry Ben as he tries to recover up a couple of positions. The further back you are in line, how much do you want to be thinking about fuel saving here? Henry Ben, it looks like he's going on the charge, chasing down the muscle man. I, I think you want to think about it a little bit, but at the same time, um, just being fifth or sixth in line, I, I can say that you save a lot of fuel without even trying at that point. So I don't think that many of these drivers will be trying really hard to fuel save. But that being said, I think that they'll be taking the savings that they can get and not trying to waste uh, the opportunity here. It's a nice clean start to this race. Marco Brazil will lead out of turn four. Brandon Trano up a groove, just trying to get some clean air on the nose. Pops out after using that draft to boost the speed as they work down in towards the line. And again, the swap around will come. Does Jesper Orman have a lunge? No, he won't. Brazil's going to shut the door on him. Swap drafting at the front, but very similar to what we saw in the hotter temperatures, Andrew. It's the top two that are being able to make moves. Third on back, very much trapped in line. Yes, and the reason for that is because these two are swapping, basically it's increasing the straight line speed, this entire group. It's not allowing third, fourth, or fifth to really have a good shot at getting a lunge just because of how fast these uh, leading two are going especially carrying speed through the corners in these cooler temperatures so it's just really creating this environment where you, you get um, sort of in a long line of cars and you really can't afford to duck out and, and try to make a move but where we're going to start to see moves happening is just like we're seeing right now uh, on board uh, that's Borda right behind Russell and it's going to be on the outsides in the turn one and turn three. That's going to be where the real opportunity for passing is. That being said, Henry Bennett, ignoring what I'm saying, trying to make a move. He's back in the line here, Arjuna. Something different from how it works in the full metal world when it comes to the outside line is marbles here at Indianapolis don't have as big an effect as they do when cars in the real world try and go up a groove. That's why you do see... Uh, the likes of Christopher Demerit very much make that line his own. You can see some gaps forming, but uh, not really significant gaps just yet. About half a second between Rashad Craig and Alexander Russell, 12th and 13th. Craig's first race as part of the Indy Alliance racing program. A bit of bubbles as well for the car, I believe, at the tail end of the field. That Severi Seppo seems to be riding for the time being and riding might not be the worst plan because you see how close this is you expect maybe a car to get behind on the tools the front and rear arb the weight jacker as well andrew and when you do that when you're not proactive when you're reactive well there's all the chance in the world that a car's going to slide up into the wall you need to make sure you're in the spot to try and avoid it yes and and you really have to be careful as the tires start to go away as we said they won't go away quite as fast as they did in the indy 500 this saturday but they will start to go away as this run goes on just because of the speeds that these drivers are running here it puts such a strain on the on the rubber regardless of what the track temperature is it, and you just start to lose either the front or the rear of the car and if you lose the front of the car it's very difficult around here because especially coming out of turn three, out of turn one, the wall comes up so, so quickly. And when you're in a line of cars like this, you have a massive aero push. And if you're not anticipating it, if it happens fairly suddenly for you, you can easily find yourself with a one-way ticket into that safer barrier there. Henry Bennett does get past AJ Musselman. Now he's back to where he qualified. In terms of drivers that have been able to make up some positions, it's been... Quite scant at the front of the field, other than Brazil and Orman swapping around for second and third positions. The only cars making up any sort of momentum is, is outside of the top ten. Macquarie's plus five, Russell's plus five, uh, Marquez has uh, lost six positions. I think partially there is just, uh, like I said, minding his business and maybe waiting for the race to come to him. Another thing that you got to consider at a track like this, we've seen it in practice today for the... 106th running of the Indianapolis 500, getting into pit road and getting off of pit road, very, very difficult. Phil Krause learned that out the hard way this past Saturday, his hopes of a victory coming to close when he ran himself a little bit wide on the pit access exit. Got to be careful here, Andrew. It's easier said than done. 
Absolutely. And the thing about indie is it just invites you to take those risks and it invites you to, to try and maximize everything you possibly can, both on pit in and pit out. And when you're that close, just even a small mistake, a small miscalculation, a small bit too much brake pressure, suddenly you've locked the tires and, and you've cost yourself a shot at victory. And, and when the margins are as thin as they are at Indianapolis, it, it's, it takes a special type of person to be able to pull it off as many times as we saw on Saturday. But even just once or twice that we'll see here today, it, it, it takes a lot of effort and a lot of concentration. Let's grab a look at something that's happened back further in the field. As you can see, I believe that's David Porcelli in the VRS satellite racing colors. Around the outside went Gil Ribeiro. Excuse me, that was, it was Gil Ribeiro and very up in the groove, struggling with the understeer. Like I was saying, maybe it falling behind on his tools. Porcelli uses another spot. Matt Taylor getting past him. How easy though, Andrew, is it for something like that to happen? Well, so that, that to me, it, it looked like uh, the worst case scenario, which is pushy loose, where, where you, you're both loose on your own, but you're, you're pushing and understeering in the draft. And I think that's what David Porcelli is suffering from. So. It's a very difficult com combination to work with because you really can't adjust your tools in one direction or the other because you'll just make one of the problems worse and then when you get out from behind, suddenly you're, suddenly you're about to lose the back end like we saw Porcelli there through turn one. But at the same time, it's very difficult to fall behind because you, you just lose the front. So it's a very, very difficult position and it really requires some quick hands and quick feet in order to keep the car on track when you you really don't have a very good handling car is, is what it looks like for David Porcelli and the satellite racing team. Really love some of these cameras that you get on the side of the track where you just see the speed upwards of what 380 kilometers an hour sometimes on the entry into the corner with all the draft and we're coming off a record breaking weekend for uh, qualifying go fast time as it were and, and Scott Dixon I think has uh, sent everyone into a tizzy with that run that he had yesterday to make himself the fastest ever pole position winner in Indianapolis 500 history the second fastest four lap run I watched that run Andrew and I was just with bated breath sitting there going what am I watching knowing that it was history yeah absolutely it was a special run and the thing about the run though that really impressed me Arjun it was just how well that car was behaved for the entire run because both, both in my virtual experience, but also watching the other drivers that were running and, and trying and taking those risks to try and, and go faster than they knew Scott Dixon would go. Their cars were on the ragged edge. Scott's looked very in control for most of that run. Turn, or lap three, lap four started to get a little bit more sketchy, but he kept his foot in it like a true racer does. But th that car was so planted on lap one and two. It was just it was amazing to see not only what Scott did as a driver, but also what the entire Ganassi team was able to produce in terms of, an, uh, of a whole package of a race car there. All of their cars look fast as Russell's now going to lose a spot to Gil Ribeiro, who slides up the track. That's not maybe going to be viewed on the nicest but we are working our way towards the second third uh, i mean the final third of this pit stop cycle henry bennett now seems to try and look down low on rodrigo franzoni but the brit going to be unable to get on past that red and black brazilian bk racing machine even jimmy johnson was having some fun as david hanger seems to have had some strife now the car looks relatively okay now is there smoke coming out of that has he blown the engine Um, it, it does look like it does in it, Arjuna. Um, it, it could be that he just had the wrong uh, radiator inlet. Um, if he had that wrong radiator inlet, he could have very easily, especially in this draft we have here, just not, not gotten enough fresh air on that uh, to the, the radiators, to the oil coolers. And yeah, it, it appears he just lost the, the engine coming into turn one there right on board this this would have been an interesting experience so he's all the way at the top of the rev range listen in don't really hear too much other than other than him really lifting off there but um well, well but he's not lifting off he just the true. engine just just stops producing as much power as what happens are i don't think i've ever oh and we have someone in the wall in the background that's a vrs satellite racing machine it's david porcelli but we'll stay under green because he didn't interfere with the cars you'll slide down to the infield and porcelli 
or keep us under that green flag condition. I saw a question as, be, as well, excuse me, about the weather conditions. Yes, Jason Brophy, it is cold. Uh, full 10 plus degrees cooler than what we saw this past weekend. Not too much wind either to, to speak of, Andrew. That will be very helpful for the cars today. in particular is always very treacherous around Indianapolis because they are 90 degree corners they don't they don't really drive like a 90 degree corner but they are a 90 degree corner and, and it makes um, the different wind directions especially when you have a lot of wind make it makes the car handle very differently corner to corner so uh, this nice quiet wind it, it just makes it that much easier you don't have to be adjusting quite so much in the cars with your tools and, and you're not sort of wearing out different ends of the car on different corners as much. So it does make things a lot easier for these drivers. Yes, but Orman again has a look down low, but not really committing. Let's ride on board with David Porcelli and see what happens to him. So through turn two, well, he's only going one direction. It's not the first time we've seen him push loose. VRS Satellite Racing driver hard into the wall, and that will be day done. Two cars then looking like they're out of the race. Yeah, just an unfortunate incident for Porcelli. I've been there, I've done that. Um, everybody sort of has to do that once, at least in a race at, at Indianapolis, in order to gain your, your Indy 500 stripes. It's, oh, it looks like we've got someone down at pit road. I believe that's Franzoni. It is, so an early call, but I said the, the pit box windows uh, were quite open. Yeah, absolutely. This is in prime opportunity to get, uh, to get a refuel here. Definitely well within the window of making it uh, with one stop. It's for, for me, it's probably a little bit earlier than, earlier than I'd like to come down at this point. Certainly, I'd like to, if I was coming down, I'd like to have a friend come with me in order to get some drafting help. That might be a better scenario is if you can get a teammate or, or get some other drivers coming down at the same time. You can do some swap drafting on your own and maybe make up some time on these leaders. But right now, that that's to me the main downside for Franzoni coming in this early is just he doesn't have anyone to draft it with right now. Yeah, you can see him there running off of the access road, stays on the lead lap, which you do here at Indianapolis unless you're about uh, seven plus seconds back from the leader. So that is also an important thing. If a caution flew, you'd be in a very comfortable position as Treno and Brazil swap again. We, we don't harp too much on these as quote unquote passes for the lead because they are very much working with one another. The The Bigger intrigue is, does Jesper Orman have a look? Look how he's getting that clean air onto the nose, looking very, very tidy at this point in the race. races. Uh, AJ Musselman's lost a bunch of positions. Borders also going to come down to pit. He might be the best friend now of Rodrigo Franzoni. Certainly Brandon Trano is praying that Jesper Orman does not do what happened on lap four of the Indy 500 and make it three wide into turn one, uh, because we know that that does not turn out well for Brandon Trano. Yeah, this is so. This is a good, uh, good sign for Franzoni as he's now got a few people coming down pit road as well, and hopefully that they'll come out around Franzoni and be able to give him some draft. But um, yeah, it, it'll be interesting to see this strategy. Is oh, as Marco Brazil from the lead making the pit stop, and I believe that is uh, Musselman, Musselman coming, coming down coming as well. Too. And therefore, it's now Orman and Trainer that are going to have to work together to do that swap. Now we'll see how effective Jesper Orman can be working together with those around him. Let's see where those cars cycle out of pit road. Franzoni's already up the road, and, you know, the, the leaders aren't too far behind. Those, the duo that came down last time by, Border and the number 14. So keep an eye out for that. We'll now have to wait and see where the muscle man and uh, Marco Brazil end up. Surely Brazil's going to be slightly in front of Franzoni. He might have to just hold his horses to form up with the number 15. But I'll tell you what, Arjuna, is if these uh, leaders can somehow get the draft of those drivers in front of them, that's going to be a massive advantage for everyone who's staying out um, here because they'll be able to just cruise for about two or three laps as, as they cruise up to the back of the, the draft of the lap cars. So it could work out really well for the drivers who have stayed out here. Franzoni and Brazil actually managed to pick up one another, so that's going to be beneficial for them as they try and build up the momentum. We'll track the lap times. Last time by was a 48 uh, for Brandon Trainer, 47.5 for Jesper Orman, who had a bit more of that swap drafting help. Franzoni did a 48.67 as Matt Holliber is going to peel off to pit lane. Clearly wants to join the party. 
Yeah, there, there are a number of drivers looking to join the party here. Henry Bennett is another one all up to fifth with the people who have come in, and he's right on the back of Alexis Newsom as well. So there, there are a number of drivers who are looking to try and work this pit cycle, both on the short side and on the long side. But this is what I was saying before, Arjun, is they've got a car right in front of them. They're able to draft using that car, maybe even leapfrog a little bit with um, with that car up to the next group, it's going to drag this whole entire group of cars that have stayed out up further away from the drivers who have already pitted. It's Andrew Marquez in the Ocantech NHRE Sports Machine that's helping out trainer Orman, Ike, Newsom, and Bennett inside of the top five. Now, fresh tires on Marquez's car. How do you play this if you're trainer? How do you play it if you're Orman? Well, that was a 40.574 that last lap from Brandon Trano, the, the, his best lap of the race. So that tells you just how fast able to go with that, with that uh, driver right in front of him. The key is not to get caught up in a battle with Marquez right now. He's got to dispose of him. He's gotten around him, but now he's got to drag himself back up to the next group of cars with Musselman. Oh, as Trano comes into the pits this time by. And he's going to be followed in by Ike, by Wilhite, and I believe that's Macquarie as well. So it leaves Orman, Newsom, Bennett, Craig, Ribeiro, Russell, Taylor, uh, Gotardetta, Dello, excuse me, and Severi Seppa, who is uh, basically almost out of drafting range. His machine uh, not looking as comfortable as some of his Indy Alliance uh, uh, compatriots, I should say, in the field. So Trainer's going to come down to box. Now, of course, the curious thing is how up to speed has this trio been able to get? Holobo's right on the back of Franzoni in Brazil. Trano revs it up and will roll nice and early. Yeah, that was a really nice stop from Brandon Trano. I wouldn't expect anything else. He got out well in front of Andreas Ike and Chris Wilhite. Uh, I would say he probably will, by the time this is done, have gained a good second on them. I don't know whether they'll be able to break the draft here. He's going to be well out in front. He might just be able to, to break this draft to second place here. It's about 1.4 back to Andreas Eikers. Matt Taylor, Severi Seppa box this time by Matt Taylor first into his box. Again, the pit stop times here, just over nine seconds for the majority of the field. A couple of drivers dipping down low. Rodrigo Franzoni of note has only done an 8.1 second pit stop as well as Matt Holliber, 8.2. What does that mean for them, Andrew, compared to uh, everyone else's? Jesper Orban dives to pit road. Yeah, so with Franzoni, because he came in so early, he probably still filled up on fuel. It's just that he didn't uh, drain his tank all the way down there. But really what it means is that most of these drivers are filling up their tanks. They're going for a short stint at the end. But I would expect that some of the drivers who are staying out, Alexis Newsom being one, Henry Bennett being another, they might look to possibly uh, do a little bit of a shorter stint here, um, back it up, towards the say the Brandon Trainer lap and, and take a little bit less fuel this time by but here is going to be the big question is Jesper Orman uh, he was on pit road there I believe he did around a, a, a 9.2 second stop so will he be in that draft Brandon Trainer or will Ike and, and uh, Franzoni be able to, to leapfrog him it looks like he's out in front of Brandon Trainer. Just a nice cycle from Jesper Orman Andreas Ike had already towed himself to the back of Brandon Trano, the status quo at the front somewhat unchanged. Marco Brazil has dropped backward by virtue of when he elected to come down to pit road. Newsom continues to pound around the track with Bennett Craig and Gotardello on to pit road this time by. There goes uh, Jesper Orman down the inside. Henry Bennett's rolling as well. I think he'll come out about sixth in line, maybe even behind Chris Wilhite. You can see as well Bennett a lot more conservative on pit access and the exit row there. You can run all the way to the wall if you want to. Now, of course, Henry Bennett couldn't do that. Brazil got very close up to the wall, and Bennett, in fact, has jumped up to what will be fifth on track if Newsom doesn't take advantage of the pit cycle in short order because Newsom is extending this race as much as he did this past Saturday. But in a race like this, I don't think that's the wisest call. I was going to ask, how, how surprised are you that Newsom has been able to go one more lap compared to everyone else? It, you saw the Indy 500, the answer should be not at all. And she, in fact, though, this does surprise me. She's going one lap further, Arjuna, so she was really saving fuel. Um, I, I agree that I don't necessarily think this is the best call for her, but at the same time, what she can do is, if, if she's strategic about when she um, 
underfills her car if she does it on both this stop and the next stop. I do think that there is a way that she can potentially uh, leapfrog herself back up there with uh, lower fuel and fresher tires. So it's definitely not the worst call ever if she can make it work through some of some uh, fueling magic here, basically. But to play the counterpoint, as here comes Newsom finally down to pit road, to play the counterpoint, uh, you're, well, at least with the strategy that Newsom is working on, you're more limited in your pit stop cycle by the amount of time it takes to put the tires on the car rather than the fuel. So that's what I think is a little surprising to me, as you can also see. Alexander Russell very slow on pit lane. I, I have a feeling that his car failed to get the fuel in and he's trying to limp it back to pit road. So there's Newsom. The gap was about 34, 35 seconds when she rolled into pit lane. About the fourth box in the pit road. So we're going to have to wait till she gets off the limiter. But it's a nice and early jump. She got the advantage of the toe of those in front of her. I get a feeling it might be an I5G 1-2 if it cycles out nicely. But Newsom's getting up to speed. Orman and Trainer already powering around the outside. Yeah, I would expect Newsom to come in in about fourth or fifth here once this all shakes out. She does have to get back in into the draft. Um, looks like she's come in right behind Andreas Ake and uh, in front of, of Franzoni, although Franzoni is looking racy. But the big thing, Arjuna, is even if she doesn't necessarily save all the time with her tires, what she does have is potentially lower fuel and fresher tires compared to her competitors. And we've seen that despite the lower track temp, it is more difficult to pass, but passing is possible. And one of the things that is going to make passing more possible as this race goes on is tire differential. So look for Newsom to really have a good car as this come this uh, race comes towards uh, its conclusion here. I don't think that this is necessarily a strategy we're going to see benefit her now, but in the future, at the end of the race, it's something that could definitely potentially win her the race. Matt Taylor's back down onto pit road. Not sure what's happened to his uh, number 21 machine, but it looks as though we're left with just 18 cars left on the leading lap as it stands right now. Let's get a look at the RaceBot TV replay as things calm down as we finish up the first cycle of pit stops. So Matt Taylor's behind Gil Ribeiro as they dive down into turn two. So much dirty air all the way up the track. That was the inevitable, uh, inevitable result. Matt Taylor in the wall. Yeah, and I, I think that Matt Taylor probably won't appreciate uh, Ribeiro taking some alternate lines there through one and two to, to feed him that dirty air, but uh, that's part of racing. That's part, especially here at Indianapolis, you have to be very strategic of how you place the car, especially reacting to the car in front of you. So uh, ju it's just one of those things that can happen. And again, the, the walls come up so quickly on the exit of these corners because they are, despite being rounded, 90 degree corners. And, and that flat wall on the exit really comes up uh, really quickly. A couple laps to go. We'll pass the halfway marker of this race. One pit stop cycle down, one still to go, being caution free for 38 completed laps as we work 39 of 80 here at the Indianapolis Motor Speedway. Of course, building up to this weekend's 106 running of the Indianapolis 500. The iRacing IndyCar Open Series will have its own short well, longer than 80 laps, but still short uh, races here at the Brickyard. So if you haven't had your fill already of Indianapolis, don't worry. There's some excitement for you. Also, Indy Pro 2000 is here at the, uh, at the Brickyard this week. If you want to pack racing nightmares, well, you know where to look. Indy Pro 2000 something we've covered plenty here on RaceBot TV. It's Brandon Trano, Jesper Orman at the front of the field. Team I5G, then the Indy Alliance Racing Program, Andreas Ike for Team Talent in third, with Alexis Newsom for the Team I5G fourth, Rodrigo Franzoni and Marco Brazil, two Brazilians, fifth and sixth, while Henry Bennett for Powerslide Motorsports runs in seventh, Chris Wilhite for Indy Alliance in eighth, Aaron McQuarrie is an independent driver in ninth, and Matt Holliver sits in tenth position as we get to that halfway marker of the race. 22 started, only one car has retired. David Henger in the number 22. David Porcelli's VRS satellite racing machine ran up the track through turn two. He's back on track, but four laps down and coming back to pit road this time by Alexander Russell after spluttering around the track with a shortage of fuel is back out with 20, uh, in 20 or three laps down from the field. And Matt Taylor after his own excursion into the wall at turn two is two laps down in 19th position. 
16 cars in this leading pack. The only two separated is Vinicius Gottadello in the 18 and Severi Seppa. Four seconds back is Gottadello from Gil Ribeiro. Severi Seppa further six seconds back. Severi Seppa likely to have the same setup that we see from Jesper Orman and Chris Wilhite and AJ Musselman. What's the difference in terms of driving here, Andrew? What do you find that different drivers tend to want from their cars? Yeah, I, I don't know that the car setup them itself is going to be very different, but the thing is that the driver does make a substantial amount of difference, um, bo both in terms of just like being able to control the car, but also in terms of how they're able to preserve the tires and preserve uh, the handling of the car throughout the run. Um, the big thing here is you need to figure out how you uh, can be smooth, how, how, how to really make your setup work um, in that dirty air, but also in this clean air swap drafting scenario, you have to be very careful as well with your inputs. Generally speaking, your car is gonna be on the loose side in clean air and on the tight side in dirty air, and you really have to be able to adapt your driving in order to suit where your car is, and it's so easy to, to push the car, especially when, when you're trying to maybe make a move and you just over push the car, over overextend the tires, and suddenly you find yourself falling back just because you, you did that little bit too much. So you're really on the ragged edge and it's down to the drivers to make their, their setup work and, and keep their tires and, and car happy, basically. On board with Henry Bennett, mentioned before, four consecutive top 10 finishes in the I racing Indianapolis 500. A number of drivers making their first top split start this past weekend. Now in the feature race, Alexis Newsom, of course, the standout of them. Franzoni, I believe it was his first. A decent run for him, but unfortunately did not get the result that maybe he wanted. AJ Musselman, another first time top, 10, uh, top uh, split start for him. Alexander Russell, David Porcelli for the two VRS satellite racing machines towards the back of the pack here today. Struggled a little bit yesterday, but at least they were happy to make the big show. Chad Simpson, the third of the VRS satellite racing machines in, yet in this past weekend's Indy 500 race. Adam Crane missing because he's, well, been enjoying some real-world motorsport. R rather jealous of that. He was at the Canadian Tire Motorsports Park. I'm not sure if you heard, Andrew. They had torrential weather to the extent where I think that you were talking about winds this past weekend at Indianapolis. 30, you know, 35 miles an hour gusts of winds. I think it was up to 50 at the Canadian Tire Motorsports Park. It wasn't just at the Canadian Tire Motorsports <laughs> Park, Arjuna. Oh, I'm sorry. You, like, I did not mean it to go this way. It, um, because don't forget that I also live in southern Ontario. And uh, just an hour before the Indy 500 started, that uh, storm that went through the Canadian Tire Motorsports Park went through my area, knocked out the power, and I was not able to race in the Indy 500 this year. So, uh, yes, I know exactly which winds you are talking about. Um, and... Uh, yeah, they, they were fierce, for sure. Like I said, I did not mean it to come that way. As Alexis Newsom will have a look on Andreas I because she wants to work her way towards the teammate at the front. Brandon Trainer, Alexis Newsom might be able to control the tempo of the race, but Ike will hold on for the time being. Seems like the weather is very much picking up, and I, I also feel bad for you, Andrew, because uh, I think I pushed you to some degree to, to get back in the rig. You were one of the, the drivers, and there are a couple of them, uh, that didn't do any practice basically until the week of when it came to qualifying when it came to the race uh, you you toiled hard to actually make it into the field and then you had that heartbreak of watching on as the race session started and you weren't part of it yeah, and i i do think it wouldn't have been so heartbreaking if i didn't know that we had such a good car because i did manage to do the friday night race that brandon Trano won and the car was really really strong the power slide car the setup was really good and it was great to see while it lasted just how well some of my teammates were doing unfortunately uh none of them really uh panned out at the end of the race there but uh it like the the one thing about it is, is it did get the fire burning a little bit more again and, and that's just what indy does is, is once you start trying to go as fast as you can at indy it, it just gets back in your blood again so when you hear me saying that you can't say no to a race at Indy, it's because of that. It's, it's because of just what this place does to you every month of May. Let's have a look on board with 
Well, unfortunately, we're going to call him Mr. Three Time from now on because that's how it's going to last at least for another six or so, uh, five or so years. It will take a long time before he might become Mr. Four Time. There is Brandon Traino adjusting the weight jack, or maybe potentially as Alexis Newsom has not just gone and passed on Andreas Eichwood has run away. Now, a half a second gap between third and fourth position. Look how calm, look how cool he is right now. I feel bad for, for throwing him under the bus very slightly. In the heat of the moment after that lap four incident, you could tell he was not happy. Of course, we showed everyone just how disappointed he was. But it's why I think that the iRacing Indianapolis 500 is the biggest sim race of the year. Yes, it might not have the most competitors. It might not have any prize money attached with it. But the fact that anyone can qualify, the fact that for nine or so years oh there we go there's the wave from Brandon Trainer. someone telling him in his ears that he's featured so let's drop him as quickly as possible uh, but the fact that you know nine years we had nine different winners and it was not until Brandon Traino in 2020 was able to go back to back did we have a repeat winner it illustrates the difficulty of winning here and the fact that sometimes this track will pick its own winner Andrew as Frenzoni's down to pit road Oh, absolutely. You don't win. At Indy. Indy chooses you as the winner. Um, and I, I've come to accept that fact through both my wins and losses at this speedway. It, it's just one of those tracks where everything not only has to go right, but it has to go right in the right way. Um, one of my wins here actually was in a race where uh, one of my competitors, Bradley Walters, he, he was by far and away the fastest driver. But there was a, a caution on lap 45 of the race, or 55, or something like that. And we were able to cut out one stop. And the, the only reason that I won that Indy 500 was because I was able to cut out the stop, and he was the one who couldn't do it because he was leading and he had such a fast car. So he, he did everything he possibly could to win that race. He was miles ahead of everyone else, and he still just didn't get the caution at the right point in time and I, I managed to win that one, but he was the one who had the best car. So it's 100% Indy chooses its own winners. And that's why I think that run of three in a row for Traino is not just remarkable. It's going to take some beating as Traino is going to dive in early and followed in by Newsom. Interesting call here, Andrew. But I like this call because it's two teammates coming in, but that was a really sketchy entry there from Alexis Newsom. but she did manage to get woed down without getting into the back of her teammate there. But uh, it's, it, I think it's a really good strategy here for both of these drivers. You can clearly make it from here with no fuel savings. So get into the pits together, do some swap drafting, maybe have one or two, but as many as four or five laps on your own. As we watch Alexis Newsom get in, whoa, that was a really, really close to speeding and really close to, to being out of control. A good job to keep that under control. And, and because of that, she's right on uh, Trino's rear end here coming out of the pit stop. So that's going to be a really good for the swap draft coming up. More importantly, rather than the fact that she didn't run into the back of her teammate, I think more importantly and more surprisingly, she didn't get a penalty for that bold pit entry. Jesper yeah. Orman will dive down to pit lane. Rodrigo Franzoni is about three seconds back from Traino and Newsom. A bit of a shorter pit stop for Brandon Traino this time by. So now we wait and see with bated breath as to whether Newsom and Traino are going to be able to clear themselves of Jesper Orman, who's rolling as the swap starts to develop between the two I5G teammates on the run down to turn number one. Orman gets through the bump on the pit exit nice and safely. Watch how much of the access road that he uses. Winds it up on the loud pedal. Up to speed are the two I5G cars. Orman should have the draft, but he's definitely not going to be at the front. Yeah, and you can just see just how powerful that swap draft was and how important it was that Alexis Newsom did what she did on pit in. And I will say that that was one of the benefits of having the teammate um, coming in with you there is, is you, you mentioned how important it was that Newsom didn't get in the back of her teammate, but Trino purposely went to the inside there, Arjuna, and he purposely gave Alexis Newsom that outside lane so that um, she could accordion up and she could maximize that pit in and that is what she did um, as Henry Bennett and Chris Wilhite both in this time around as well. Matt Taylor has come in as well but again he was already a couple of laps down so we'll now track the progress of Bennett of Wilhite compared to the trio that lead at the front of the net race. 
Franzoni has very much been dropped from the equation. He tried to gamble, but it's going to require a caution to bring him back into contention. Ben has been up on the jacks for seven seconds and counting as he drops with 8.3 seconds of service. Done 8.2 for Chris Wilhite, compares to eight seconds equally for Trano as well as for Jesper Orman. Already on the run into turn one. Don't think Bennett's going to be close to the draft and Wilhite, well, he's a country mile away. Yeah, it's going to be so important for Henry Bennett here that he's going to be able to stay in, in this draft and it's, I think, going to be very, very close. You see him duck out as quickly as he can. I think he's just barely got a sniff of it, but it's going to be very important that he keeps it on this run. Otherwise, we're going to have a three-horse race here towards the line. Well, we're going to be graced by the presence of the winner of the 13th running of the iRacing Indianapolis 500. Christian Steele joins us now. Christian, have you finished celebrating yet? Hey, hey, hey. No, I've got at least another month celebrating. Um, so that, that's where I'm at. Marco Brazil comes out of pit lane, will be behind this group of, at the front as well. Uh, so, has your win, man, have we managed to bully you into coming to Indianapolis this coming weekend, though? Um, not this weekend, but I do promise next year it's, like, already on my calendar. I can't say that the hotels or the tickets have been purchased yet, but... Uh, it, it's happening next year. I can promise you that. I thought we'd try it. Talk to us about the race, Steele. I mean, it's fair to say you were in the wars, and um, I'm going to quote someone else. It was a bit of a, a fluke, right, the way the caution cycled out. The fact that you were able to, to be fourth in line with one lap to go in the shootout, having the freshest tires. Now, it's not to say that you didn't earn that win with the pass, but you very much uh, threw, I'm sure, the first 150 laps. Weren't thinking you were going to end in victory lane. Uh, no, but I must say that I put myself in, in that position, like, strategically. Uh, I, I knew that that was my shot to win on a 5-10% to 10 chance, you know. I thought it through. I, I played my cards, and um, some, some people out there on the track were not necessarily putting themselves in that position, and I did. Um... And, you know, that's just how racing goes sometimes. I think Alexis and Jacob were obviously pretty much good on fuel. So, you know, they obviously really deserved that win. Um, but, you know, that's just how, how the speedway goes sometimes, you know. You only have to lead one lap at the end of the day. It just has to be at the very end of the race. So, Steele, I know you've graduated college. What's, what's looking... Like it's on the horizon for you this year. Are we going to see you more on Monday nights, or are you going to be doing some more racing? Yeah, I, I'll be back for sure. Uh, somewhat more full-time. I'm still going to kind of feel out how like work and traveling and that sort of stuff kind of works out. Um, but, you know, my goal would be hopefully to race in something like Lionheart potentially, something in preferably more of a later night Pacific time schedule so Monday nights might not be the best uh, long term going forward but I'm going to try to rank Detroit next week which because I always love those street street courses more technical tracks are you know kind of something that I really enjoy so Detroit is one of them and I'll hopefully be around next week for that so should be a lot of fun I've heard that Detroit is a blast on the new time model. I hope that now we've spoken to you, the i5G fan discord will not write. Thanks for joining us, Steel. Looking forward to seeing you in seven days' time. Sounds good. Thank you. Right averted. Always good to talk to our winners as everyone now has cycled onto pit lane for the final time. Got Adello and Severi Sepa boxing with just under 20 laps to go. It's a three-horse Shootout right now, but Andreas Ike, Henry Bennett aren't too far behind. Uh, Brazil, Wilhite, Franzoni, Macquarie, a Holliber all within three and a half seconds. If we got a caution, it'll be a very feisty scrap to the end until we get to the checkered flag, Andrew. I think even without a caution, it's looking like a feisty scrap here, uh, especially with Henry Bennett being able to or leapfrog his way from seventh to fifth on that pit cycle. It's put him right behind Andreas Ike. Uh, in fourth place there uh, for Ake, it, and it really, I think, sets up these two um, to potentially attack the leading trio. Jesper Orman, he's looked strong, but at the same time, he hasn't really been able to do anything with Trano and Newsom at the front, 
similarly, we didn't see him be able to do anything with Marco Brazil, so it might just be that a different setup can do a little bit more um, if it can find a way around Jesper Orman here. 13 on back have been split up three seconds between Rashad Craig and Andrew Marquez, who's battling out with about four different cars, with the 14, the 7, the 19 all behind him. They'll need a caution to be dragged back towards the front into the fight as well. As we approach 15 laps to go, we've got about 12 minutes left in this race. If we go green from here. Now, the last time I commentated on an IndyCar Open race here at the Indianapolis Motor Speedway, I lost my voice and we saw Alexis Newsom win it on strategy, sputtering all the way out of turn three to the line. It's not that sort of race right now. Newsom's worked her way up four positions to be at the front. Of course, still swapping back and forward with her teammate. Jesper Ullman's down one from the front row of the grid. Henry Bennett plus two, Brazil minus three, Will Height plus two. Macquarie, the biggest of the movers and qualifying setups at Indy sometimes feel like black magic, but especially with these cooler track conditions, you don't have to have a, a tip-top, top-level race car to, to be able to fight, Andrew. No, but it certainly does help to have that top-level race car, and especially when you have two tip-top level race cars in front of you um, with the i5G leading the way here, it definitely does help to, to be comfortable with your car and knowing that you can do whatever you need to do. So it's not a prerequisite, but at the same time, it's definitely not something to uh, take for granted either. 15 to go this time by. Remember, in terms of tires, Newsom and Trainer will have the oldest at the front of this field. Franzoni pitted first, but he's at uh, basically the very tail of the pack right now. As Henry Bennett's going to have a look down the inside of the team talent, silver, black, and orange machine. Now, can the Brit squeeze his way through? Bit more momentum on the outside line. Bennett still trying to find a way past. Yeah, and the problem for Henry Bennett is that he's got Andreas Eich, who's really working that outside lane. And when a car's hooked up on the outside, it's very difficult for the car to complete the pass on the inside because even when you get a little sniff of the draft, then come, come the next corner, you find yourself with uh, much more likely to be in the arrow wash of the cars in front of you, and you just don't have the grip that they have on, on that outside lane. So the, the lane that, that Ake is running just makes it very, very difficult to make uh, progress here. Eason back to the front, and it's still trying to set up a move. Behind him, Matt Holliver's having a look at Aaron McQuarrie at the very tail of this pack only. Fernando Borda and Rashad Craig behind them as there's the look down low from Holliber. There's a look down low from Bennett as well using the draft from Brandon Trainer to try and work his way forward. But it's going to be deja vu again as Ike's going to be able to hold on on the outside line. The more they fight, the less opportunity that Ike potentially has to close up to Jesper Orman. You still see the two I5G machines at the front swapping back and forth, controlling the tempo of this race. It's what they would have wanted to see, even with these cool conditions, Andrew. Third in line, finding it very difficult to close. Absolutely. And the problem for Henry Bennett as well is the more that he runs that bottom lane the way he's doing it, the more he's going to use up his tires and he's just not going to have anything left come the end of the race. But right now it definitely seems like it's an I-5G uh, race uh, here at the front and, and it doesn't look like Orman has anything particularly for these, these leading two. And that doesn't surprise me based on just how much speed that, that I-5G has shown all throughout the month of May here at Indy. Back and forth they go again. Of course, this past weekend, the Porsche Esports Super Cup, the Porsche Tag Heuer Esports Super Cup clashed with the iRacing Indianapolis 500, so we didn't get to see the likes of Johan Harth, Kevin Ellis Jr., and a couple of the other uh, world championship drivers that might have given the race a lob. We did have the chance to catch up with Kevin Ellis Jr. yesterday on RaceBot TV's Talking Tense, which is back uh, hopefully every couple of Sundays with some new features. Of course, my most favorite of them the uh, master of the dump truck, where Zach Campbell has built what is potentially the worst setup that has ever existed on iRacing, will challenge drivers at Oran Park North A, one of the most hideous layouts that we have here on iRacing, with a car that's literally trying to murder you. Ellis Jr. first on the board with a 46-7-0. Now we'll see who we have up in a couple of weeks, if they can challenge him. Of course, though, 
that wasn't the highlight of social media's uh, episode of that podcast. Instead, it was uh, Pete Berryman at the Apex Racing Team House deciding that he wanted to show some skin, if you will, and uh, appearing in the backdrop of shot as we were chatting with Kevin Ellis Jr. Jesper Orman has made a small mistake uh, through turns one and two and has dropped back very slightly. Here comes Ike, here comes Bennett. And this could be the opportunity that Henry Bennett needs because uh, it suddenly uh, brought a lot more arrow push into the front of Andreas Ike's car. But it's just, you can see that all three cars in front of Ike keep on trying to run that bottom line. So there really is no clean air here for Henry Bennett. It's just not allowing him to get a good run. But Ike's got a good run on Orman down the back straightaway with uh, Trano uh, peeking out. He might have a shot, but he's just not going to try it here. Like maybe Rashad Craig and Fernando Borda to at the back of this leading queue squabbling still 12 cars split by just under four seconds could try and hype it up and say it's anyone's game but as it sits right now it's two i5g cars that are controlling the tempos across the yard of bricks we go nine laps to go it's Newsom versus Trano Orman continues to try and close back up Bennett still trying to find a way on past but crucially, that was the first time that Ormans tried to run that high line and it really bottled up Ike through turn one there and Henry Bennett had a very uh, good look to the bottom. He just couldn't make the pass stick on the corner exit there. But if Orman keeps running that high line in front of Ake, look for Henry Bennett to maybe be able to get by Ake and then Orman. But I'll tell you what, Arjun, he's used up a lot of, the, uh, a lot of his tires and I just don't think that he has anything for the I5G duo in the front right now. Also, maybe you have to watch at Marco Brazil as he closes. Here comes Bennett once more, the brick to the inside. This time he's a lot further along, but again, just gonna get tight as he works through the apex of the corner. The team talent number five machine continue to hold station. They've lost a little bit of ground to the race leaders though. It's the two I5G machines just swapping back and forth and the call to come down early might be the crucial one as Bennett will have another look, but Ike will hold on. Coming down early in that second cycle of the race might be the thing that propelled Newsom to be able to control the race with Brandon Trano. Uh, absolutely spot on strategy from I5G there. And uh, I think the only question that remains at this point is which one of the two I5G cars will be the one who takes the, the lead because at a certain point, all of this cooperation that they've been exhibiting for these past 63 laps now, that's just going to go away. And it's going to be every person and every driver on I5G for themselves. So the question is, when does that happen? When do they say, we're going to stop working together, we're going to start, start fighting amongst ourselves? Because when you're at seven laps to go, that, that crunch time is quickly approaching. Orman closing. Is that magic number three to go? I think three to go is probably when I'd start to think about it. I think any earlier and you do risk the, the Swede behind coming and swarming you. Yeah, I, I would say that three is probably a, a safe number, but at the same time, you, you don't want to be the one who messes up right now. You don't want to be the one who may, maybe leaves the move too late, mate doesn't make the move at the right point in time and then suddenly you find yourself um, with, with cross signal so it, it's very tricky this, this is the timing of the race and timing this um, transition be between co uh, cooperation to competition that's going to be key for both of these drivers Orman's right on the back of them once more Bennett getting very close to the team talent car you won't have a look either as they dive into turn one Bennett very much stalled out. The battle behind, though, is for ninth position as Macquarie doesn't just fend off Holoba, will send Holoba back into the clutches of Fernando Borda and Rashad Craig. Those two have closed up to the back of the number nine machine on the edge of the top ten. Bennett again has another look down low, but this time he's able to be a little bit more committed. Had to back off through the short shoot. And it's getting a great run here. He's got the opportunity to dive down into turn one. There's no two ways about it. Henry Bennett has way more uh, st straight line speed than he Andreas Ike does at this point in time. Because even with the draft that Andreas has, he Henry's really been able to chuck it down there. But this is the first time that he's been able to go through the short shoot side by side with Ike. But it's still just not quite enough. He needs to find a way to be able to clear him through turn one. That's the only way that this is going to work is as if he is all the way clear by the exit of turn one. It 
might take a bit of a Boston shuffle, if you will. The uh, old slide job maybe will have to come and you have to be quite aggressive to pinch the car on the outside all the way up to the wall and then hope that they blink before you blink. It's one of those situations, but we're at that point of no return. A caution from here will end the race. Three laps to go. Is this the magic number for the I5G Geo at the front? I think it has to be. I think that, that you can't leave it very much longer if you're Brandon Trino and Alexis Newsom. Otherwise, you're going to give the other one the advantage coming uh, to the white flag, and you really want to make sure that you're positioned properly for that white flag lap because we've seen just how powerful the draft is, and it's going to be very difficult um, to, to uh, defend it if you're in that first position. Five miles to go as they come across the yard of bricks to start the penultimate lap of the race. They're still going back and forth. Orman has to look in the rearview mirrors because Ike is getting very, very close to him. But you talked about the line that Ike is running. Orman feeds him some dirty air. There goes Henry Bennett down to the inside. That was perfectly timed from Henry Bennett, and he does finally clear Andreas Ake there. So that was exactly what he needed to do, but I fear it's too little too late. We only have one and a half laps to go here, and Brandon Trainer and Alexis Newsom, they're still swapping here. Let, let's see what happens on this last lap, but I think it's just down to these two at this point. At this point, Bennett's best hope is to get up onto the podium. White flag in hand for Barney the flag man. Two and a half miles left to go at the Indianapolis Motor Speedway. Houston will lead on the run down to turn one, but Trainer will try and get the swap back as they work in towards turn three. Look at him run that higher line as he tries to set up the momentum, the arc through the corner. Bennett tries to do the same for third, but he's a little bit too far behind. The snake starts to form. Trano has the inside as they dive into turn three for the very final time. Side by side, the two teammates, the king of the pricks, slips on through, but it might be a drag race to the line. Don't count out Alexis Newsom just yet. It's taken 80 laps to get here. It will be a photo finish between Trano and Newsom at the line. But Brandon Trano, I think, has it by one thousandth of a second. No, Newsom, five thousandths of a second. A photo finish. And Alexis Newsom best the king of the bricks at the line. Oh, my word. I told you it would be very, very difficult to defend if you were the leader coming off a of four. And that's exactly what happened there. Alexis Newsom does just just enough i would say probably by about three inches there she hips brandon trainer the line just one more defeat for the king of the indy 500 and the indianapolis motor speedway here but alexis newsom she did so well she did so well on saturday and now she uh, does take victory here at indianapolis it wasn't in the 500 but it was a very deserving race here arjuna We'll try and get a look at what happened there and just how close it really was because what a finish that was. I wondered if Trainer had got a bit too early, very similar to what we thought that Alexander Van der Staten has done. But Alexis Newsom will burn it down in victory lane in what has been an overall successful weekend for Team I5G. Let's get a look at that very quickly. You can see as they come down towards the yard of bricks, the momentum on the side of that... Alexis Newsom machine down low, and you'll see just how close it is as well. The margin was infinitesimally small, five thousandths of a second. And that is literal inches, Arjuna. That That is so, so close, and it is amazing just how close that is. And, and I've been a part of a drag race like that, and, and it, is, it is so much fun to do that drag race and especially when you don't know whether you've got it or not, when you look up and you see your name and you're at the top of that timing pylon, there's nothing better than crossing the line after a drag race at Indianapolis. It's so thrilling. Alexis Newsom was foiled by cautions in a strategy masterclass this past Saturday. She at least makes up for that with a win here in the iRacing IndyCar Open Championship. Monday night IndyCars, it's Alexis Newsom that will take the victory. And a Team I5G, one and two. The pit stop call might just have been the strategy that allowed Newsom to swap around with Brandon Trainer at the front of the field. Five thousands splits them. Yes, for Orman gets a podium for the Indy Alliance Racing Team, while Henry Bennett's in fourth on his return to a Monday night. Andreas Ike, Marco Brazil, Chris Wilhite, Rodrigo Franzoni, Aaron McQuarrie, and Matt Holliber all through the top ten.
Fernando Border and Rashad Craig in 11th and 12th position with Hiro and Kinas in the 14 machine, 13th. AJ Musselman and Andrew Marquez, a photo finish between them as well for 14th and 15th. Gil Ribeiro, Vinicius Gotardello, and Severi Seppa, the final cars on the leading lap. Alexander Russell struggles in his VRS satellite racing machine to come across the line in 19th. Matt Taylor survives to 20th. David Bocelli retires with 25 laps left on the board. And David Henger retiring inside of the opening 20 laps of this race will complete our field here today. Well, it was a bit of a pr procession until those final three or so laps. But the Brickyard always has something up its sleeve, a 5,000th of a second difference between Newsom and between Brandon Trainer. Let's not dawdle too much longer. Let's go down to Victory Lane where Alexis Newsom is standing by. And Alexis, after I'm sure some disappointment on Saturday, is a good way to uh, at least get some redemption here at the Brickyard. Yeah, and um, in this race last year, came so close with the field thing. So it worked out this time. What was the call between you and Trainer? We were discussing when you guys would decide it was go time. Was the was the idea on the final lap, or were you maybe just waiting and to, to see how close Jesper was going to be? Yeah, the final lap was pretty much it. We were um, until then we were just biding our time, picking the right lanes, so making sure we we had enough space to fight it between ourselves. Congratulations on the win, Alexis. We'll see you this Wednesday for the Lionheart IndyCar Series at Phoenix. Yep, thank you, guys. Nothing. Alexis Newsom wins, but Brandon Traino in what's been a great season for him misses out here today. Brandon, that was a fun race with your teammate to the line. Yeah, no, Alexis took me to school. Um, I got to stop teaching her how to, how to drive so dang good. Um, but no, that was really fun. Um, I enjoyed that after... Uh, the not so good Saturday we had, but uh, yeah, nice bounce back, nice one too, and and uh, good race there at the end with Alexis. After Saturday, what have you been up to? How have you managed to uh, try and put the disappointment behind you? Uh, eating chicken nuggets, just eating my pain and sorrows away. No, <laughs> um, really, just uh, focusing on our trip to uh, India in real life. I'm excited to meet up with all my teammates that I haven't seen in a while and some that I haven't seen at all. So looking forward to that. Yeah, that will be fun. Uh, of course, I, I want to ask about, uh, of course, the 500 might not have gone your way, but got a bit of a break before you're back for the Open Wheels 500. How long will you take off before you guys start working on that again? Uh, that's a question for Chris. He's usually the one that cracks the whip pretty soon. So. Uh, <laughs> We'll ask him, but uh, we'll take a little bit off considering we, we swept the podium for the second year in a row, which I actually didn't realize. Um, so that's, that's pretty cool. But uh, yeah, we'll take a little time off and kind of go over our notes of what we learned from the race, what we can do better, and and move forward. So I'll be Mr. Pedantic. Technically, last year it was the Apex Racing Team that swept the podium. This year it was right. the Dubai 5G. It's all the same. It's all the same. We know that. Congratulations <laughs> on a great run today, Brandon. And hopefully, uh, even though you won't have much practice, I know that Belle Isle is apparently a blast with the new tire model. Hopefully, we'll see you as a bit of a championship cor coronation in seven days' time. Yeah, sounds good. I ho hopefully, I'm back in time. We'll see. Over then to the final step of the podium where on his return to a Monday night competition, Jesper Orman gets home in third. Jesper, what was that race like for you, especially that final stint as he tried to find a way past the Team i5G duo? Hey, guys. Yeah, that was fun. Um, great great race for me. I mean, starting P2. And uh, yeah, um, I kind of knew that i5G was doing, going to do something on the last pit stop. And uh, of course, Alexis had saved so much fuel. She had a really quick stop. And... Well, from then on, last night I was just sitting behind them and like, not sure what I was going to do. I could attack probably, but you know, they, they could probably work together and try to out, out drive me and I would probably finish third anyway. So I kind of um, knew I was going, I was in for the, for the third spot. I was just sitting there. Um, and I knew that uh, Andreas, he's also probably not going to do some, so much either. So I was kind of happy to see him behind me so i was kind of trying to go low and and uh give henry some dirty air so that he would have difficulties uh passing uh andreas because yeah but yeah 
with Tent to Go, they started to, I mean, I5G has started to, to work together a little bit more. I try to do something, but it's so difficult to, to do anything. With. Everybody has such a, such great sets here. And um, yeah, but to be honest, uh, I'm really happy with P2, P, P3 and, and Trainer P2. Uh, he's always up there, you know, and really happy to see Alexis win. She deserved that one after uh, this weekend's uh, Indy 500. I think it's fair to say that the IAR program somewhat struggled this past week in the iRacing in the US 500. What lessons have you learned as you try and build for more of these 500 mile races? Um, starting uh, higher up in the field, <laughs> basically. You know, we're stuck down there. Uh, with uh, we're doing, we're trying so much. We we really work hard improving our our uh, uh, our uh, Q sets. So. That is uh, like our next step because race-wise, I don't think we are that off. I even think that we have probably better uh, sets than maybe most of the guys. I feel really, really comfortable in, with what we have. But uh, yeah, of course, um, starting P24 to P33, it's not easy to work our, our way through the field, you know? Well, congratulations on the run, yes, but great to have you back on a Monday. Hopefully we'll see you more in the future. Thanks, Adrian. Thanks, Andrew. Jesper Orman completes our podium wrap-up then here at the Indianapolis Motor Speedway. We'll say goodbye to it, at least for the time being, but you know we can't stay away. At the very least, here on RaceBot TV, we'll be back at the Brickyard midway through June for the Lionheart IndyCar 500. But next up, it's a trip to the Motor City and a track that is about as bumpy as you can find as technical as you can find but from what i hear with this newer tire model it is an absolute blast andrew what are we looking forward to when we go to belle isle in seven days time it's just about the opposite from indianapolis in almost every way you can possibly imagine arjuna it's going to be tight it's going to be technical and it's going to be a lot of fun for the drivers the the new tire model is really working well with belle isle it allows you to sort of hang the car out. It doesn't want to kill you as much as it did last year. And it's just going to be a lot of fun over the bumps. There's going to be people making mistakes with the concrete walls there. But at the same time, it, it's just going to be one of those races where um, I think a lot of different drivers are going to be under pressure for lot, lots of the race because it's going to be difficult to pass. But at the same time, it's not impossible to pass either. So just one of my favorite uh, tracks to drive from a driving standpoint on the iRacing service and definitely looking forward to seeing what these drivers do to round out the schedule. Seven days from now, join us at 8 p.m. Eastern, 5 p.m. Pacific for our final round of 2022 Season 2. Hopefully I'll be back in time. I'm scheduled to land at just about midday here on the West Coast after my trip to Indy. I would love to be a part of what's going to be fun. Should expect to see the likes of Casey Kerwin join us as well. He said he's looking forward to potentially challenging himself at the Motor City. For now, though, we reflect on what's been a tumultuous couple of weeks here at the Brickyard. First, the iRacing Fix 500 saw its third different winner in three different years. The 13th running of the iRacing Indianapolis 500 played itself out for 180 odd laps under green flag conditions. Caution fest though at the end, and ultimately Christian Steele walks away on top, the winner of the iRacing Indianapolis 500. It's time though for us to look elsewhere. We'll be back this coming Wednesday for the Lionheart IndyCar Series as we go for the jewel in the desert. We head to the short track, we head to the Phoenix Raceway. Join us then alongside myself, Justin Prince. We'll be covering all the action from 10.05 p.m. Eastern, 7.05 p.m. Pacific. But for now, for the team at RaceBot TV, for Andrew Kinsella and myself, Arjuna Kankipati, we bid you farewell from the Speedway, where Alexis Newsom has won a close finish with the King of the Bricks. Five thousandths is all that separated the Team i5G drivers. Alexis Newsom celebrates a winner in the iRacing IndyCar Open Championship. <laughs>